Attention Nashville, Tennessee area drivers. Commodore Express is actively hiring CDLA team truck drivers for our West Coast operations. This is an in and out and back type operation. 4,500 plus miles per week. We offer full benefits package and above average pay package and an achievable bonus for more than four turns per month. We are a family oriented company that takes pride in our values, honesty, respect, and integrity. We can work with full time, part time, retired, or casual drivers. Visit our website at www.commodoreexpress.net to learn more about us and request an online application. Or call Robert in recruiting for more information at 615 287 5140 Extension 1. That's 615 287 5140 Extension 1. We look forward to seeing you in one of our seats. Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. The life has knocked you down. Pick yourself up with Bootstraps and Bra Straps. Get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, if you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Jerry Zare. Before Jerry went into the ministry, he was a professional actor performing in over 50 musicals and dramas. His, no his novel, Blurring the Lines, tells of his experience in the entertainment business in Los Angeles, California. The theme running through the book is, what are you willing to sell your soul for? Jerry has a degree in speech and theater from Ball State University. Um, and he's been in Indiana and has a Master of Divinity degree from Christian Theo Theological Seminary in Indianapolis, Indiana. All right, welcome to this show, Jerry. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's good to be with you, Sheila, and all, all of your listeners. Yeah, so that's, I'd, I'd love to hear more about everything. And, you know, through life, as we go through life, we have ups and downs. And this show actually came about with my new best selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And it's just a fun book, but it talks about all the tough situations that show up in life and how to get back on track quickly. And so I'd love for you to share with the audience a time in your business or personal life where you experienced a tough situation and how you got back on track. Well, I, I think it was when I was in the entertainment business, uh, when I was out in LA and, you know, I was getting a lot of accolades, a lot of af affirmation uh, exterior from the people, but internally I was feeling very empty inside. Mm -hmm. I was, um, I found it was very superficial. All, all the relationships were transactional. Um, and you know, what can you do for me? And, yeah. but, but there really wasn't much feeding my soul. And, and actually, I mean, you know, I'd be doing a show eight o'clock at night, get done at 10 o'clock, go out and party. Um, and you drink all night long uh, or do drugs or whatever. And I found myself feeling very empty inside. And mm -hmm. that's when I decided I had to get out of this environment or I'd be dead in five years. 
Right. And, and, and that's really when I began my spiritual awakening and started mm -hmm. seeking something deeper for my life. Mm -hmm. So how did that change as far as you were in this entertainment industry doing uh, musicals? Yeah, and, and I was in, in the uh, uh, L.A. Connection, improvisational theater, uh, dinner theater, you know, all, all of that lifestyle where you're on the road traveling. Mm -hmm. That is so interesting. And then you started, you took your ministry degree, you got a degree in ministry at that point? or Well, I, I as I got out of theater, I, I started teaching speech and theater in a high school. But I really, that's when I began... Um, understanding, exploring what my understanding was of God. You know, mm -hmm. I grew up in a very legalistic Mennonite Amish background. Oh, wow. and, and, and so my, my understanding of God was very kind of judgmental. I, I saw God as this, you know, this being out there in the somehow going to judge us and strike us down. And, and um, uh, I didn't see a lot of love and grace. Mm -hmm. So and I, like many people, if you have a bad experience in religion, you think all religion or all churches or all faith traditions are like yours. Mm. So I, I left my, I left God, I disconnected. And, and that's, you know, when I got out of theater, I started realizing I needed something. I wanted something more deeper in my life. And that's when I opened myself up again um, to a, a start questioning and searching about um, my understanding of God and people. Mm -hmm. And and that's when I, I went to seminary, not so much to be a minister, but just to have a, a credible understanding of God. Mm -hmm. So that now, you know, I see God as much more, um, we can call God higher power, love. Uh, some people call it the great spirit as a Native Americans, the higher consciousness. But it, it is that which is the source of all life that is within us and around us. Mm -hmm. And and so I began that whole process of learning about faith traditions and religions and found out that we have so much more in common than what divide us. Oh yes, that's so true. And it's, it's an interesting thing. It seems that in life, there's a point in your life, in most people's life where they get to really reevaluate or evaluate their spirituality, their, their religious beliefs, or, um, you know, it, it just changes. And it's, it's a beautiful time to, to do the studies and the research. And it may be for one reason or another, maybe you move to a new town and you've got to pick a new church or temple, synagogue, wherever you go, or maybe you've never gone and you're like, well, let me see what this is all about. And it's, it's an interesting time right now because, throughout the United States, even many of these places are closed. And so that makes it harder um, to connect with groups and kind of see what they're about or, you know, so, so that that's a little difficult. How have you experienced that switch with, with the pandemic going on and so many churches having to be closed? Well, I, I mean, I think it is for all of us that that we we yearn for community. We 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 love that relationships, and when we're isolated, it's difficult. It's challenging. The wonderful thing is, uh, what's happened from the pandemic is we've developed this technology. You and I are connecting. Uh, I've been with people all around the world, and and in some way, we're we're connecting and realizing we're a much uh, more connected as a world community than what we thought we were. Mm. But, but I do think that um, part of our journey, you know, we, as in your book, are we, you have a crisis, you have something that happens in your life where you have to start rethinking. And, and maybe is it a crisis, but you just start thinking, I want more in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the teachings that you had when you grew up are, were just those were teachings. It's not right. that they were the gospel, and you can let them go. And there's some value of questioning and searching and seeking. Um, and so that's why I wrote this book, The Peacemaker's Path: mm -hmm. Multi Faith Reflection to Deepen Your Spirituality, because that was my focus was to say, let us find the themes that are in all of our major religions, that are the teachings that are there that have been there from 
thousands of years in different cultures, different times, but God has made present to us, whether it was through Jesus, Muhammad, ba, uh, Buddha, Baha'u'llah, and that we can see the real essence of the universal laws mm -hmm. that God has given to us. Yes, and there's so much wisdom in in those texts, in, in those writings, whether it's the Bible or, or the Quran or any other text. Um, there's, there's wisdom from all these years and from the study of spirituality that applies. But then there's people that may have messed it up. <laughs> And, and that's, you know, being human. And and so there's that wisdom in there. And I'm like, okay, there's certain things that I've done in my life that I was like, well, if all these different religious belief, believers in the different books, they all believe this is not a good thing to do. It's not healthy. It's not whatever. And then science comes along and says, yep, this isn't so good for you. I'm like, okay. You can't question if, if religion and science are agreeing on this, I'm just not going to do it. I don't need to have that in my life. And so I made decisions based on that. And so now there, there are these connections where even science has become more spiritual, has shown uh, there's a group of people that will pray, meditate, pray, and they'll send a, a, a blessing or a thought or whatever over to something on the other side of the planet. And, and they'll be, the water will change or the, or whatever the, and they're able to study the difference and the effect, or you have um, Dalai Lama comes to town or another religious person, and you'll see that the crime goes down. And so there's something to that. That's even if you're not spiritual or right. religious, right. that's like, well, oh, there's something there. Well, and I think as as you say, you know, I mean, quantum physics uh, now understands in science that there's di different dimensions of the universe that energy cannot be destroyed, but it gets manifested in different ways. So, like one of the things I have these six themes that I've written uh, in in my book, and the idea, like one of them, is about the karma. Uh, Jesus speaks about it as you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. And and we know that, that what you put out there, you will come back. If you put out their goodness and love and joy, it comes back to you. Right. If you put out their bitterness and anger and resentment, it, 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 that comes back to you and you have a lot of drama in your life. Mm -hmm. And so the teachings of Jesus were also, that was the teachings of the Hindu scriptures and Buddhist scriptures thousands of years before Jesus was there. And, and the whole idea is by seeing these scriptures that have these central themes, they're not all exactly like, but they're similar in the teachings. You say, wow, mm -hmm. you know, we realize these universal truths, as you said, are there. And now even science is proving that, you know, science is, is finding out what we know as people of faith have, have believed. Mm, yes. And there's there's so many different things that that I've seen in my life that are unquestionable. I've seen people that have passed that are passing over, crossing over, that they're already speaking to something beyond. And it doesn't matter the culture all over the world. These experiences happen where there's a connection to something beyond. And and so you know, it's, it's, it's just a beautiful, sacred thing. And that tradition, having some form of tradition in your family, uh, when you do lo lose a loved one or something happens, that's like, I could see the such value in that because it's part of the healing process. It's part of how you get together in community, how you, how everything is created so that, there's a, a time for that spirituality that's that's really part of the healing process for many people and very helpful. Yes, and I, I think, you know, what I realized was because I had a bad experience early on and I gave up on God, but I now I realize just because you have an experience in a certain church or denomination or faith tradition, that's only, you know, don't blame God for that experience or open yourself up that God is much broader than mm. what that experience was. And so, you know, I have a new concept of God. I have a new understanding of God's grace and love. 
to see God present in within me and around me and in all things. And that sense of presence of God is, um, which, which is part of what I try to help people find, you know, so that in my writing, it, it's, it's not a book of theology, but it's a practical 40 day devotion, if you will, that people can take and read one reflection a day. And it's something that you can read and then read these scriptures from different faith traditions, having some questions to reflect on a prayer from a faith leader. And then you go, okay, I see how these things can broaden and, and deepen my own spirituality. Not saying that I have to become Jewish or Muslim or Buddhist if I'm Christian or if I'm some other faith tradition, but but this enhance my faith, right. enhance my concept of God mm -hmm. and the world. Yes, yes, that's that's wonderful and very good. And something so important um, is. I, I raised six children, um, three from from birth, three that were adopted very young, um, under three years old into the family. And I always liked to share about the different traditions, especially because we had this blended family of children from different places and and to really honor honor that and to give them that choice when they're older, but to give them also the understanding of each human because each human being, we come here and we come through a culture and religion is very deep in many cultures in one form or another. And to understand the religion and to study that part of it is to really be able to connect more with, with everybody. And I think, you know, your listeners, because they, they listen to your podcast, which I've listened to, and, and you have this uh, wonderful uh, view of seeing the world in a more open uh, way of, of opening yourself up. And so your listeners are already open. They're already asking questions, seeking. And, and I think, you know, towards bringing some unity and healing to our world is when we're able to do that, when we're able to uh, listen to one another and, and hear a different point of view. You know, it's, it's very challenging to hold your own beliefs, mm -hmm. but to be open to I, new ideas Yes, and to say, okay, I can let go of this one point of view and, and accept a new point of view. Um, for some people, they don't like change. They, they want people to tell them, just tell me what to think. Tell mm -hmm. me what to believe. Mm -hmm. but, but in reality, for us to really grow, to really deepen ourself and our experience of life, it is for us to ask questions and just be seekers. Yes. And that's and that, that's one of the wonderful things I love about you and and I think your listeners that they uh, they want to learn and be open to new points of view. Right. Now I dedicated an entire chapter in my book to spirituality and self-care and that's it's something that's so important to give yourself that time uh, and and to figure out what that is for you. It could just be a walk in nature. It could be going to to a um, community service or event, it, it, whatever it is for you. But there, that time is so healing. And it doesn't make any sense for those people that are running a business or working long hours or have a whole bunch of kids to raise or, you know, really busy. But that time fuels you. The time for meditation, for thought, for prayer. It, it fuels you and it fuels the family um, or your employers, employees. Um, maybe you work for somebody else. They're going to feel that. So think about the energy. When you walk into a room or somebody else walks into a room, if the energy is off because they haven't fueled, oh, my, you could lose business deals. The energy is off. Everybody feels it. And it's when they're coming in with that refreshed, renewed energy everybody feels that there's a peace, whether especially now parents, teachers, uh, you know, if you're an employer, even if you just started at the company and you have the lowest position, your energy can completely shift the environment that you're in. And, and you know, it's amazing because uh, our thoughts uh, manifest into our actions and, and, and manifest into our bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton wrote a book called The Biology of Belief that was really instrumental to me about understanding that our thoughts are, are, are 
you know, they get manifested in many ways. And sometimes we have what I call the critic. We have that voice inside of us that tells us, oh, you can't do that. You know, mm -hmm. what do you think you're doing? You're messing up. You're this and that. Mm -hmm. and, and that critic voice is usually from our parent or something in our past. But we listen to that voice a lot of times more than we do a, a good friend or somebody who we value. And, and I tell people, don't let that critic voice stay in your brain rent free. Mm -hmm. All that those are all are thoughts. You can retrain and reshape your thoughts to manifest and to find that sense of love and self-worth of yourself. But sometimes those of us who grew up and didn't feel very lovable, mm -hmm. didn't had a sense of shame or inadequacy, those were the thoughts that permeate our brain. And, and we need to first, before we can do anything else with anybody else, we need to learn how to love ourselves and be able to retrain our own mind to give us thoughts of affirmation and value. Mm -hmm, definitely. And there's something else when you have a traumatic experience, something happens, auto crash or a loss or whatever it is, you're getting a divorce. There's always that protection and the brain will naturally start repeating that bad incident so that you don't get it again, but it keeps you sick to yes. keep it in. And so it's whenever that thought comes to you, even from the first day of whatever that experience was, that was really difficult to get through to re, you know, say, okay, yes, that happened. But now let me put a different thought in there. Let right. me redirect that thought. And it's right. so intentional you have to be very intentional about it, especially when it's a very serious traumatic thing, because it's a natural, you know, I've met people that 30 years ago, they got divorced and you, they'll come visit and it's been 30 years. And the first sentence is this terrible thing happened. <laughs> and it's like uh, 30 years ago. And, and so it's not, so they and they keep telling the story. So every time you replay the story, unless it's for helping and you're not emotionally attached, right? Um, when you're not emotionally attached, it's different, but they're still in that emotion, they've never left. So really that that situation now it's like they're still there, they're reliving that thing, whatever happened over and over again, and the body feels it, and then our body has dis-ease. And oh. so that's huge. And, and, you know, so one of my themes in the book is loving yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I have uh, walking the enlightened path, the power of prayer, loving yourself, loving others, the quest for peace. But in the loving yourself, you know, what I realized was growing up in the Christian tradition, I focused on loving others more than I did loving myself. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, the greatest commandment was to love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the second commandment is to love ourselves. Well, that's been something for a lot of us that is difficult. Mm -hmm. we, we think almost if we love ourselves, we're, we're being selfish. When in reality, if we don't self-care, if we don't learn how to love ourselves, um, we have nothing to give. Right. Um, and, and that loving ourself, it's some layers of, as you said, about getting in touch with the divine within, mm -hmm. learning to, to love ourselves like God loves us, believe in ourselves, learning to trust ourselves. And, and some of that is shaping those thoughts right. that have been with us from many years in the past, mm -hmm. but realizing all they are are thoughts. I mean, they're not like any more valuable than what we will produce, but we let them in there because they've been with us for a long time. Yes. Yes. That is a big one. So I'd love to hear more about some of the other chapters in your book. Well, I, in, in part of uh, the first one, of course, walking the enlightenment path is, is really that beginning of the awareness, a beginning of, of our own journey of, as you said, something that defines you that gives you a new journey um, and loving yourself, loving others. There's a lot in there about forgiveness and, and learning to forgive others and forgive ourselves. 
You know, forgiveness is one of the most, I think, basic spiritual principles and the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. When you've been wounded or you've been wronged, um, it's hard to forgive sometimes somebody. And what has happened is you carry that hurt and that and that anger or that 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 woundedness, and the other person has gone on and they live their life, and you're still holding on to those grudges. Yeah. And until we can learn how to forgive others or even forgive ourselves, maybe you know we've gone through a divorce and we blame ourselves, or we feel like we're not a good parent or we're not doing something well, and so when we can the living to learn how to forgive is so instrumental, I think, in our spiritual growth and inner happiness for our life. Mm, yes, yes. Now, one of the questions that I, I have to ask um, is, what was it like singing on the Johnny Carson show? And how did that show up? Well, and of course, uh, I, that dates me a little bit. It's kind of mm -hmm. like for those maybe who are younger, it's like the Jimmy Kimmel show, you know, or the, uh, you know, the Colbert show. Uh, the, the Johnny Carson show, I, I was in, in, in the entertainment business out there. I, um, I was in the line going into the show with my girlfriend and they audition you. They have called stump the band mm -hmm. where people sing a song. And if the art, if, the, if Doc Severance and the band doesn't know it, then you sing the song. Well, yeah. they actually audition you. Well, I had a vaudeville song. Mm -hmm. And so the talent scout, he loved it, you know, and he put me right in a certain spot so that when Johnny Carson comes into the audience, they go, uh, who has a song to sing, you know, to stump mm -hmm. the band. And it looks like he's just picking you out of the random, but he knew exactly where he was going. Right. And uh, I sang the song Egyptian Ella, an old vaudeville song and Doc Severson, they didn't know it. And so as I'm singing the song and I'm going on, you know, Johnny starts to pull the microphone from me because mm -hmm. I'm, going on the song and I pull it back from me because I'm getting close to my ending and, and I, and I do the great big ending and, and, uh, it was fun, you know, and, and, uh, I was so naive because I thought, Oh, I'm singing on the Johnny Carson show. Some agent will call me tomorrow. Oh, right. When, right. <laughs> when in yeah. reality, <laughs> nobody called me. <laughs> oh, and, and it's so interesting because when you go back to talking about that time in your life in the entertainment business and the, you know, you, go out to parties and networking and trying to meet people, the right people. And it, it is very different um, and interesting. And what advice would you give to people going through that where they can stay strong in whatever their values and, and choices are and, and not, and still do whatever their, you know, if that's their talent and they want to be in that industry or whatever industry to be able to do that in a way that they can have peace in their life. Well, yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's really something that I was always uh, confronted with. What are you willing to sell your soul for? Because I was always had these opportunities to do things, but it was going to take a piece of my, my, my soul away. Yes. Um, and I think other people, maybe they're in sales, you know, maybe they're, yeah. they're in a job where their manager wants them to do some things that are unethical. And, and finally, I just came to the place where it wasn't worth the money. It wasn't worth that, that, you know, those things are temporal. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I wanted to be at a place where I could sleep at night exactly. and feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, and, and once I got out of that environment and I, I found myself doing something that was feeding my soul I, I felt myself being nurtured again and where, where, you know, I had friends who were the sales and, and they were always trying to, you know, out manipulate the, the yeah. scores and manipulate things to, mm -hmm. to get a better market. But they felt like, you know, this isn't really what life is about. Yeah. And, and I, and I find tell me, find something that you have some passion that, that, that gives you some fulfillment in your life. Mm -hmm. It isn't just about making money. Right. Bob Buford has a book called Moving from Success to Significance. He made a lot of money in his life, but his life was very empty. And he shifted and he started living a life of how he could make significance with his life. Yes, yes. That's so important. And I, I guess I was really blessed in my life to have incredible friends 
um, even in, in, in Beverly Hills, Hollywood, in, in the industry that were actually very aligned um, with me in that sense. And I appreciated that. I never really drank or did any partying, um, but, <laughs> but I went out with them and, and they do whatever some people did their thing. And, and that was okay. But I always kept really solid with where I was at and why, I mean, I'm like, I'm raising six kids. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do these things. It's, it doesn't align for me, not a judgment, but it just wasn't where I was at. And I was very strong on that, but there were also times, even in my younger years where I worked for somebody that actually was not very nice to the women and, and starting to harass in not appropriate ways. And I literally quit, but I had the confidence to say, I know I, I actually got another job and then I quit. So, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't just like, okay, now I'm not going to be able to pay my bills, but I was I stood for those standards and it's really hard to do. There was a lot of pressure that that guy actually got fired and, and, and caught um, at, at anyway, right after that. So I was really glad because he was hurting a lot of people, but there's something about being in alignment with your standards and saying, this is where, this is where I'm at. And if something isn't aligned, uh, whether no matter, it could be in an industry you love, but working for a company or a, a, or a business or whatever that isn't aligned with your values is going to hurt. And it's not going to be something that's sustainable for long term. And so it's better to cut that off short and go do your own thing. And I think my belief, this is just my crazy belief and what I found is staying on that and being really solid about what I'll accept in my life meant that better opportunities would show up and it'd be like, okay, yeah, no wonder that wasn't right. Cause something even better showed up for me. And it, and it was almost like a test. Like, are you going to do this? Or are you well, going to, you know? Yeah. And, and I think I, I love that image of being aligned because there is something when we are aligned with the divine, with that, which is greater than us, uh, you know, whether you call God higher power uh, consciousness, great spirit. There's something beyond us that is wanting for us to live in the fullness of who we are. And, and, and that's, that's why I wrote this book, The Peacemaker's Path, because it was for people to reconnect with the divine within them and, and beyond them. So, mm -hmm. so that, so that when you can, uh, get connected and align with yourself, um, and then who are the people who surround you? And and I, I think that's exactly right. So that, um, you know, you can be in, in any type of industry uh, and the people can be doing their thing and you don't have to make judgments on them. Mm -hmm. But you can say, that's not that's not for me. Yes. And, and I want something better. I want my life to flourish. Mm -hmm. And 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 so, you know, this was not a book of theology. It was a, a book of very practical. It's, it's a 40 day a devotional, really a 40 day reflections. Mm -hmm that you could take uh, each day and, and, and read this reflection on this theme um, to feed your soul mm -hmm. and to give you some focus. And, and that was my hope. That's why I wrote this book and, and um, to give some sense of uh, helping people reconnect with uh, the divine within them and beyond them. Yes. Now there's this whole thing of, religion versus spirituality where are you at with that what is the definition for well you? you know i mean i and so for me because i i'm in a christian tradition i i would say i'm religious and spiritual because i i don't define myself out of my religious tradition i see god in much bigger ways i have friends who are spiritual who aren't who are not religious so they they'll say you know i don't buy into any certain faith tradition. I'm not Christian or Jewish, but I, I'm, I believe that there's something beyond and I take something from each of our faith traditions. Right. And, and I think that's why, you know, I've been involved with interfaith ministries for so many years mm -hmm. and, and have found value in re, in the teachings of Buddha and the teachings yeah. of Hinduism and the teachings of Jesus. I found, wow, these universal truths that have been present in a different culture, in a different, you know, thousands of years from one another, reinforced to me that there is a, a consciousness, 
-hmm. there is a, a power beyond us who's helping us understand that we are, when we are connected with that, that divine, yeah. um, we, we, we have such greater power in our life. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. There's something to it that I've always been very connected or guided or intuitive in the sense that, okay, if this doesn't feel right, I listen. And then there were times when I was younger where I didn't listen. Obviously we all did. <laughs> and you don't listen and then you're like, oh, okay, that happened. And it was because I didn't listen to that, that loving, like, no, that's, don't go to that party tonight. Don't go, you know, it's not a good idea. It, you know, even if I'm not going to do drinking, it may not be safe for some other reason. Sometimes it's not something we understand, but it's something we can even feel within us. That's, that's a guiding kind of a thing. Well, and I think for some of us who grow up with maybe some brokenness or woundedness, that clouds our, our clarity, that clouds us because we're, we're still feeling a sense of anger mm -hmm. or, or, uh, or, or, um, woundedness in our life and that's why i say we need to look at lear learning how to love and give grace to ourselves and forgiveness learning how to trust ourselves because when you can trust who you are and that voice within you um now you can you can live out a fuller life i grew up not being told not to trust myself mm -hmm. and and i thought you know i thought uh i had to listen to somebody else Mm -hmm. And, and, and then when I realized really God and, and, and that within me was the greatest wisdom. Don't listen to other people who were telling me, oh, you're, you're, you don't, you're lazy. You don't know what you know. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, I started listening to that within myself. I found a greater confidence mm -hmm. and, uh, and a greater inner peace. Nice. Yes. And that's something when in all my studies, and I did a lot of studies on all the different religions also kind of like I had that time in my life where I really studied things. And I remember studying um, the works of Rudolf Steiner and, and mm. his, his belief of, okay, all the children are born into the families that they choose and that there's a reason for that particular religion that they are in. Uh, whether they leave that religion later or not, there was something there that was part of the bigger plan. And I was like, wow, that was, that was different. That was, I, I really thought, hmm, okay, well, you know, I told my kids, well, I guess you all planned me and, and this religion, uh -huh. so <laughs> that's what you chose. And then you make oh. your own mind, but, but it is something you know, when we get to look back at our families and parents and see how they did things, it it really, a lot of times they come from their highest sense of good and right. It's just not, doesn't align for your life. Right. And I, you know, I think our parents did the best they could. Yeah. That That's part of our forgiveness, you know, is realizing my father gave me a lot of good things. He had a terrible temper. He was very driven. And that was the one thing that he passed on to me. And, and so mm -hmm. I had to learn how to deal with my own emotions and my own sense of drivenness, learning how to be present. Yes. And, and, and so I had to learn to say, just because my father felt like he always had to, couldn't rest and he was lazy if he took a nap. Mm -hmm. And then he told me I was lazy, you know, because I didn't work hard enough. And I realized that was his own stuff. And I finally came to a place in my life when I go, I'm not lazy. In fact, I, I do a lot of things. Maybe I don't, you know, and not driven like he was. Mm. Uh, but of course, he had a nervous breakdown when he was 52 years old. Yeah. And I didn't want to be like that. Mm. So I, that was part of, I think, you know, having that opportunity of self-awareness and self-reflection. Mm -hmm. And and that's a lot of people, they don't want to do that. They just want to tell me what to believe or I don't want to change. Yeah. And my hunch is people who are listening here are people who are seekers, that they're wanting to expand and listen. And so part of that is 
asking some of those questions. What what hold us back? What what do we feel burdened by? Mm -hmm. And 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 start to think about what were some of those things that we still hold on to that maybe make us feel guilty uh -huh. or a sense of shame mm. that really are not, they're just there because somebody told us that. Yes, yes. But when we really look, and that's why most of us have never read the Quran mm. or the Sikh scriptures or Baha'i scriptures. And so I wanted to, to bring these scriptures to people so that as they read those, with these different themes, they they go, wow, Muhammad's teachings and, and Buddha's teachings are so similar with Jesus' teachings. Yeah. And there is some universal truth here mm -hmm. that I can gain in my life. That's beautiful. Yes. And so, so important. What a great, great book. I can't wait to read it. I have not read it yet. So I will be getting that book. And that, that sounds wonderful. Now, um, I am thinking about what came to me while you were talking is the thing about that time in our lives where you have your, your children and then they're young adults and they have that time where they're going to make their own choices. Mm -hmm. And what maybe we believe everything, you know, freedom. And then they become very, very religious in one thing or another. That's they, they love these rules <laughs> and they're going to follow one thing or another, or they're going to go a different way, whatever way it is. What do you um, advise for parents in order to stay in connection and community with those adult children as they kind of figure it out and make their own choices? Wow, I think that's a great question. And, and I, you know, for me, relationships are the most important thing. Beliefs or doctrine or I, our political points of views are secondary. You know, it's the same way within my family. We have people who are different points of view politically and it puts some strain on us. But, you know, I, I continue to say what's most important is the relationship. What do we have in common? Mm -hmm. and, and to focus on that rather than what divides us. Right. And when we started focusing on the things that divide us, I just wouldn't go there. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I would say to people, you know, that, that your children and, and your friends have different points of view that we come with some humility to say, I don't have all the answers. My point of view, maybe this is what I believe, but there's more than one point of view here. Yes. And, and, and I think when, when we can come to that humility to say, um, I don't have all the answers. Uh, none of us have all the point of view that we can learn from each other. And maybe as we can learn and listen to one another, actually, we can have a greater understanding of humanity right. and of the world and of God. Mm, that's so true. And there's something really special about that community. And I believe right now, especially in our time where people are divided over so many things with the pandemic and we can't, we don't even need to go into all that, but that would take another whole show. Wow. And, and then there's the politics and then there's the religion and everything is dividing us at a time on the planet where in community, when we come together, that's where we're going to have freedom and find whatever we need to find to end this whole pandemic and have that peace. It's in that community. And so that's, that's really important to, to look beyond that and, and look at the love coming from people with different opinions. They, that whatever they believe, they believe it so strongly. They reach out to me and they tell me quick, you got to do this because of da, 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 or, or you got to, or politically da, da, da. And I'm like, Oh, they love me. And they're, they want me to know because they want to protect me. They want to care for me. They, they're, this is, they believe it and I don't believe it, but, <laughs> or it doesn't align with me. But I only am going to accept the love, and I'm right, going to accept right. the love back. And I might not watch the video <laughs> or whatever, or, right. uh, or do whatever. But but I will I will acknowledge the love part. And and I think that's so essential. I mean, I think when people say, "How do we bring unity and healing in our country?" and and how do we be a peacemaker? It really begins with our sense of listening and valuing the other. You know, I've been married for 37 years, and, and I must admit, um, unfortunately, when we first got married, my wife had two daughters. It was a blended family. 
and I was going to ship them. I was going to make them straighten up. I came, came from this authoritarian, you know, my point of view was right. And, uh, and, and if you just listen to me, it will all be there. And my, and at one point I, I married my wife because she was strong and independent, but in another way, I, 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 I want her to agree with me. And she pushed back and she helped me realize, Jerry, there's more than one point of view here. Yeah. And in fact, what I realized was there's more than one way to resolve an issue, to find a ways of, of resolving. If you really want to resolve an issue, you can find compromise. Mm -hmm. and, and I had to learn how to let go of my own point of view. You know, I, I love to debate. I love to argue. But what I realized was trying to make my point of view win really lost. I maybe won the battle, but I lost the war because I lost the relationship. Yeah. And, and what was more important than being right was caring for the relationship. Mm -hmm. And, and I learned that in marriage. And I think that's also in, in all of our relationships because none of us have all the truth as we've said. And so let me realize there are more than one point of view and let me respect people. I can still my point of view, and I still hold on to my belief, but but rather than finding what we disagree with, and I could always do that. I can tell you <laughs> what I think is wrong in the Catholic faith or the Baptist faith or what's wrong with the Republic or the Democrat. <laughs> let, let us find what we have together right. in common and then focus on that and build a way of hope and healing for our world. Yes, definitely. Now, I always ask this question on my show. If you could go back in time, what advice would you give your younger self? Well, you know, I wish I wish we could, of course. Uh, and that's part of our growing older and realizing that I wish I would have given myself a little more grace, yeah. a little more... Um, slowing things down. I was so driven to get through college, to go into LA, to go to the next show, the next production. Mm -hmm. When one thing is done, I moved on to another and I didn't really savor. Mm -hmm. I didn't really, uh, when people gave me a compliment, I said, oh yeah, but not really. And I didn't take those in. And so I, I realized now, you know, to, to receive with grace and gratitude, the things I've been given and to enjoy life. So, you know, it's taken me some time, unfortunately, but I hope those who are listening will maybe realize to slow things down, to enjoy the moment where they are and, and to give themselves some grace, to realize you're doing the best you can. Yeah. And when you mess up, it's part of the learning process and, and, and give yourself some forgiveness and love. Yes, that's perfect. I love that. And again, um, we are coming to the end of our talking time. So for, I'd love for you to share the title of your book and where people can get it and learn more about all you're doing. Well, um, the book is The Peacemaker's Path, Multi-Faith Reflections to Deepen Your Spirituality. And my website is jerryzare.com, or you can get it on Amazon. But I'd love to, if you go onto my website, you can connect with me. And if you have comments or questions. Um, but I hope, you know, for those who are listening or maybe searching and maybe feeling there's some brokenness in their life and, and they're wanting to feel some sense of hope as they're listening to this conversation, I want them to know they are a child of God. They are loved and valued. And even though maybe they don't feel adequate or they don't feel very good about themselves, hear that divine voice within them trust themselves, know their love, and live in that goodness to the fulfillment of, of their desires. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. And thank you for being a guest on the show. And for those tuning in, we'll be back after these messages. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. And today I have something special to share with you. Ready? Are you ready to take your power back, take your life back? Have you just experienced a difficult situation or just living through our very interesting times? Are you ready to reinvent, rebuild, and reboot? 
Life on Your Terms, check out my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. Here's a little bit more. Necessitated. You need a guide to show you how we get through a situation like this, to give you resources and to help you get out of the emotional pea soup fog of dealing with a crisis and the resulting fallout. I've been there and I'm here to help you. Out of the fog. If you weren't emotionally bound up in your situation, you would have more clarity. You would be able to see your best options for dealing with whatever comes up. If the version of yourself who has already walked through this rock bottom and come out the other end could go back in time and give you, the you right now, some advice, what would she say? Would she tell you to slow down, to stop rushing, that you don't have to have all the answers today? Would the future you recommend not making any major decisions without reviewing them first, particularly while you're still in the fog? Would she tell you that normal is going to look different for a while, but that you will feel normal again? In case we haven't invented time travel by the time you read this book, I'm here to tell you all of the above. I developed the Boots formula to help you learn to make choices, have a life shift, and make great things happen based on your individual values and best life vision. A change is going to happen, and it's worth it. There is a stage where it feels like everyone in your life is picking at you. Life itself may seem like it's trying its best to stop you from doing whatever you want to do. All you hear is, that's a stupid idea, and that's never going to work, and who do you think you are? One of the hardest things for people to do is to realign and possibly walk away from anything and anyone that conflicts with their value systems. But you are going to discover that power within yourself. Through the activities and examples in this book, you will discover your true north and will be able to easily do what is needed to move forward with your life. Anything that hurts you, that doesn't resonate for you, that fights against what you want and believe in, you are going to give it the boot. Once you have turned your rock bottom moment into a positive, beautiful life shift, you can live your life on your terms. Your life will probably look different, but you get to design it this time. You are taking your life back and you are in charge, not anybody else. Sooner than you can imagine, you'll be in the career of your dreams or the relationship you always wanted. Because you are going to learn to develop healthy boundaries. Because you are going to do things differently along the way from here to there. You will begin to attract the people, the job, the place to live, all of the opportunities that align with who you are, your essence, your truth, not anybody else's or even society's expectations of the way you're supposed to be. Once you have accepted that you are in charge of living your life and you begin to embody living your truth, people are going to see you. They're going to be inspired by you. Then you're going to hear, hey, can you show me how you did that? I want to do it too. When you assess your peer group and up level according to your life purpose and vision, and once you have created a life shift for yourself, whatever that looks like, your life is not just full, it's fulfilled. Not only do you get more and better sleep, you wake up feeling rested and happy. You know that you're doing what you need to do. Yes. Sometimes your heart will call you to leave certain friends or family members in order to find a more aligned peer group. From what I've seen, however, the ones who leave always return to lead their family and friends to success. Because your friends are more in alignment with your beliefs and value system, they support you while also pushing you toward your personal best. Life still involves work, but as a whole, it feels far more effortless. But you don't have to wait for the right person, right job, or right investment opportunity to show up. 
you can start living now so that every moment as you go forward through the process of recovering from rock bottom and redesigning your life is one more step to being the best version of you. The one who came back. And that is what my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, The Formula to Go from Rock Bottom Back into Action in Any Situation is All About. It is now available on Audible and Amazon Books, as well as wherever fine books are sold. And there is a special, if you go to my website, www.sheilamack.com, www.sheilamack.com. So grab a copy today, and in that book, you will get free, 14 free gifts related to to strategizing and redesigning life on your terms. Is not one size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. To grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. It is now available on Audible as well as on Amazon and Kindle and at www.sheilamack.com.